<laughs> right. Uh, yeah, pretty much for the lack of a better title, but may uh, a bit short, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I thought, I thought that I'll give you a, a crying introduction to the second design. Uh, I try to explain what I want you uh, to work on. So. Um, Yeah, so here we are. Okay, as you know, it's a uh, world, <laughs> world animal today, today. So I thought uh, it would be a really good opportunity uh, to talk about my dragon once again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remember I, I gave this example that, that we want to measure optical properties. So uh, that's the disease, the dragon leaves, uh, leaves tracks to optical properties. And, uh, Problem that we're facing is to measure the tracks and then to try to go back to the disease. In terms of uh, optical coherence tomography, we've been doing that with uh, the attenuation coefficient. So the coefficient uh, describes how, the, uh, how fast the signal decays with the depth, basically. Uh, actually, there's been a, lot, uh, quite, quite a, a long list of clinical studies already that uh, uh, try to. Uh, Try to do that so, so by basing on the uh, generation of the cycle to distinguish between uh, uh, these uh, various tissue types. Uh, one particular success, uh, you know, uh, I would say, is uh, in uh, Jin. I think it's a precursor of stem cancer. Uh, that's been found for Jin as well, same for the patients. And there was quite, yeah, quite a big difference, a legitimate measurable difference between healthy uh, tissue and. In this case, this is important because uh, thin is uh, it's a precursor to, uh, to cancer, but it is also associated with reimbursement. So, the normal clinical uh, way of dealing with it is that if the patient comes and there's a suspicion of thin, uh, then uh, the process uh, takes five, so that is uh, analyzed in ecology. Uh, and if it is, uh, if it is, of course, if it is thin, then some treatment protocols to be uh, in place. But if it, if it is not, then you still have to do some kind of uh, information and uh, other, uh, something other than uh, And then essentially the biopsy should not have been taken. And, uh, because this is a recurring disease, uh, that, uh, so one patient can uh, do many, many biopsies. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of them will be, uh, will be necessary. So, uh, so the idea here is what we would like to do is to, uh, to make some kind of pre-selection uh, to see if the difference in events before taking the vibes. Uh, this is an example conclusive that the individual tissue may look suspect based on the information in the file that can classify the cell. Uh, that, that may be leave it in place for a little bit and then come, up, uh, come back later and see back later. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is that then uh, the session might might also wonder if it is it really necessary to take it out because we already know it. So, so that, that would be the 
an ultimate way of uh, putting this obstacle technology into the system. Uh, Dover, uh, implementing new plans of Indonesia is a precursor to cancer. Signature status of tissue cancer. Stem cells uh, are starting to look irregular, but it's not cancer. Virus, so it's the tissue layer of uh, This is another example from another uh, from another model. Uh, the problem is uh, it's a little bit uh, different there. The, the, the condition that many people suffer from is the so-called parents or something. Parents or something. The chronic inflammation of the esophagus, and uh, essentially the, yeah, it's, it's caused by reflex of uh, of cancer. Delphine sickness, where the, the, because people eat unhealthy and, uh, and get stress or stomach problems, so a lot of people have a, have actually have the reflex. Uh, if it's chronic, then uh, the acid, the acid, so stomach and hand acid, acid, uh, esophagus, esophagus is not built for that, so. Uh, you'll, you'll develop then patients with uh, some kind of uh, chronic inflammation. The lower part of these things. That can, uh, that, that is a, a risk, uh, risk factor for cancer. So I've listed here all the stages that are some the cancer names that it can be used. And for the stages that the tissue goes through as it uh, develops, and the veritasophagus by itself is. Uh, it's not nice to have, but it is, it is inflammation. So it is not going to happen. After that, it's so that you can get a bit of dysfunction of the inflammation, and it's a displacement, and mutation, and it's a dysfunction worse. But in the end, it can end up as a cancer. So here, too, these patients are, uh, it was really chronic, and they are under surveillance. So, uh, so, uh, so, so doctors would check uh, by endoscopy, just looking at uh, how the tissue behaves with the, uh, whether it should be characterized as uh, uh, normal plastic, so that the early stages, in that case, you don't need to do uh, not, not need to do that much on the chicken island. Uh, but if it is, uh, if it is in the nature, then it is, yeah, uh, it's a high chance that it will develop as a cancer. Uh, ultimately, the treatment for that would be uh, to remove the, uh, the lower part of the esophagus and the full part of the stomach up uh, and catch that back again. It's called uh, a mock which is kind of nasty. That's what they are if you, uh, if you have. If you have a technique that can, uh, that can monitor this without taking those biopsies. Uh, so we try to do that with OCT as well. So what you see here is uh, this is OCT image of, uh, of the part of the, of the lower part of the, uh, of the esophagus. Uh, this is kind of like cube, so uh, the probe that goes in there uh, acts like kind of a lighthouse, so it's, it images so it basically sideways and it rotates. And by rotating the by rotating the probe and putting it back up, you have some kind of three D. We hear reconstruction of the of the esophagus. So this is that part of the slice of the reconstruction. And these are measurements that were taken. This uh, this was taken on ex vivo, so it was taken on not in a live and prepared after after the fact. Taken after that, it's not the right story. Uh, so what we did here is we tried to prepare it. Uh, Okay, take images and then uh, send the tissue to pathology. That is, uh, the that you see on top, the tissue that pathology stretches and uh, determine whether or not it is malignant or benign. So, this was determined from this test, this was determined from the PCR, and then we uh, try to put these markers in the tissue before the image, but we also find that on the so that they could make a one-to-one -one match between these uh, and between those images. So basically, we now know the pathologist and said, hey, this is clearly a non-plastic lesion, and this is clearly a non-plastic lesion. Yeah, so basically, these markers and these structures are kind of back in the image. Uh, and 
then uh, okay, but they're, 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 they're trying to do is uh, look at the, uh, the average uh, uh, decay of your species of website, and this will be a very they will get five different layers uh, here. So it's a little, uh, the tissue which, uh, from which they can expect the attenuation of the species. So, so this way, this is the this is then the way you know, from, from a clinical study that, that we try to uh, find uh, basically uh, the dragon tracks. Um, you can, I think you can feel a little bit coming like this particular example is done because uh, the values were so close. Uh, for this, uh, for this specific study, we didn't really find the difference. Uh, so these are the attenuation coefficients from uh, the plastic tissue uh, samples in the dark from non plastic pellets, of course. So this is the and as you can see, in both cases, there was not really a difference. Uh, again, contrast that with the success story. That was, <laughs> the promising results that we had uh, in the other, uh, the other so, so, so the question, the question also is a little bit, okay, what, why did we find, did we not find the, uh, something here? The working hypothesis is the same. So we, Progression of disease and due to things it's not from. But somehow we, we do measure there and we don't measure it. So let, let's, uh, I don't have a definite answer, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's a bit to look into how this how data actually, uh, uh, how, how, how we get to the data. So this is the simulation. We need to make a point. Uh, so, so, so let's suppose we have OCP information measurements that fall into uh, two categories of so course of health and disease. Uh, we went through the whole process of just uh, seven days, seven days of disease, then we group these results based on the pathology result. And, this, uh, and let's say this would be the, the overview of the measurements that we have. So, uh, so the, the healthy uh, tissue samples have the normal distribution of the OCP values. We want Six and seven deviations too. Uh, for the disease, the tissue samples to the determination should be higher. Um, perfect data. So, this is one period. No, no, this is just this is just, uh, this simulation. I will show you real data in a moment, and it looks much more messy. But, uh, <laughs> So what the clinical study then usually reports, and so here's some, so let's say this is the data, and I write an application about it, and uh, let's say for the journal, and then what, what, if it's a clinical journal, what they will ask you to report is uh, this cutoff value, uh, and an associated sensitivity and specificity. So the cutoff value basically will be a value for the USD, for which I would say if it is higher, then I will classify it as, uh, as disease, and if it's lower, in this case, then I would classify it as and then associated with that cover value is sensitivity and specificity. And sensitivity um, yeah, is, is probability of a correct diagnosis. So, uh, uh, as disease, when tissue is actually diseased, and specificity is the, the probability that you get a correct diagnosis as healthy when the tissue is actually healthy. As you can see, there is a small overlap region here. So if I, if I take, so in this case, uh, the, uh, the sensible guess for a cutoff would be uh, would be here with nine. In the uh, so I would classify everything uh, that is that has an attenuation option higher than nine. I would classify it as uh, healthy, sensory disease, and then anything lower I would classify it as healthy. At some point, so there are a few healthy samples that have nine attenuation options. So I would this this classifying the other way around. Um, so so this, so this probability of correct, correct diagnosis is, is not is not one. There is a small chance that uh, uh, 
as some that has been associated with this purpose. Uh, okay, so let's say we take nine volts. Uh, okay, so let's say we take nine volts. Calculate from the small ambiguity, we see that sensitivity and specificity is the same. Say, uh, 90, 98%. So if you have to do this measurement, there's a 98% probability that they will test the specified issue of this procedure at least. Simulation that can make things a little bit worse. So uh, well, now I've broadened it here. This a little bit. Uh, I'll keep the curve of value in mind. Let me say from the previous example. Uh, now, C now is like sensitivity, so the probability of a correct diagnosis when seized uh, drops to 28% because this overlap is. That, that goes already away and that's a good question. Um, because the healthy uh, distribution doesn't change much, but the specificity also does not change that much, so that's what we use for time. Uh, and I can make it even worse work by putting, uh, putting them a little bit closer together, so even more overlap. Uh, so broad distributions and a lot of overlap, still keeping that cut off at nine. Uh, yeah, now that says 50. Drops 50%, so I really don't need it. So I couldn't, I might as well support this. And the specificity is still uh, so, so, so the probability of diagnosing healthy kids as healthy is still. Uh, still uh, yeah. Is it only this that we have a lot of solution? You would hope that if you do a lot of, uh, if you would do a lot of experiment, uh, experiments, that you that you will get the distribution that you want. This is of course not necessarily the case. But that would also that would also make this uh, basically so, so what I'm trying to illustrate here is that the, the, the problem with uh, the clinical publications is that they, they will just give you the cutoff value and the sensitivity specificity and uh, that are associated with that within these whole these whole problems that they apply the APIs, they don't find any information. So, so that's why it's important to have this problem. My feeling is it makes implementation very difficult. So, 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 let's, let's, so how would you do this? How do you do this? So much more again, the clinical study should get the finite number of samples. Uh, you know, we sort of two groups based on the based on just the policies. Uh, and that's exactly what was simulated here in the specific five different measurements, which is already a lot in a, in a normal clinical study because you don't be able to guess five different measurements. That's because you need, for example, seeing five different patients or different patients in five different measurements. 
and getting the data ready is uh, this, this uh, can be tricky. Uh, and so what you, what you can do is for every uh, for every possible cutoff value, you're just going to count. Okay, let's say I pick this cutoff value. Uh, how many samples do I would, would I then by, uh, correct correctly diagnose as uh, as healthy, and how many would I correctly diagnose as, uh, as, as healthy? Let's see. Um, so, so you could look at for every possible uh, cutoff value. Yeah. You could make a graph like this, for example. So, uh, so if, I, if, I, if I pick my cutoff, first of all, you along this axis, uh, and I calculate the probability uh, of correct, uh, correctly diagnosing disease, uh, disease samples uh, sensitivity, then I see if the cutoff value is set to zero, I will catch all disease samples. So my sensitivity is going to be one. Uh, and it's in the sense that it stays very high until, in this case, uh, where, where this distribution starts. And if I set my critical value to five, then I, I catch them all. Uh, but then, if I, if I increase my, then I start, then at some point, I start missing the disease cells, the sensitivity goes But until the pick value is real, then I miss everything. The exact opposite thing happens for specificity. If you correctly diagnose the healthy samples, if I set my cutoff value back to zero, I will not diagnose any of the healthy uh, tissues, and my specificity will be zero. If they increase it, uh, they go to very high values, and uh, they will classify every healthy tissue, uh, healthy tissue as, as, as healthy, uh, but they will also misclassify a lot of disease tissues. Uh, so by varying the cutoff and varying along these axes, I, I get I get a, a balance between sensitivity and specificity. In other clinical uh, uh, clinical people would like us to do that is to, to pick an optimal value for these cutoffs, an optimal value which balances uh, sensitivity and specificity. That is what is then going to be really important. Uh, yeah, so, 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 so too low, you will get many false, uh, false positives. This type of patients that are diagnosed with disease while they are not. So too high, false negatives. So patients that are disease is healthy, even though they are. Uh, so how uh, how do we do that? So we combine uh, we have these two graphs for sensitivity and specificity. Uh, we combine them in a single curve. It's called the receiving operator curve. It's a, it's a very strange name, but uh, it comes from uh, the curve comes from World War II from uh, uh, radar technology. At some, at some point, uh, they they were developing radar. Uh, range of the uh, aircraft, uh, and they are true. They were so basically the measurement was very weak, but it was a big thing for the aircraft in the vicinity, but also very high velocity misses. Uh, so they developed this, this formalism for ROC curves to see how, uh, how good that rate was. Well, uh, somehow they got adopted uh, uh, in this field as well, or at least the terminology stays. Uh, so what you plot here is one minus the specificity uh, times the times the curve a curve, uh, a curve like this. A couple of things in this curve. There is, uh, of course, the cutoff value that was on this axis uh, is now really obscured. Uh, it's, in this case, uh, if you walk a lot along the curve this way, uh, that will correspond to an increasing. Ballpoint curve uh, here is the uh, thin sensitivity starts at high as long as you walk along the curve, the sensitivity drops and that's interesting. Uh, there is this uh, star in there that was the, um, 
Uh, that is the point that is obtained from yet from yet another graph. If I, uh, if I calculate the what's called the Jordan's index, that is the sensitivity plus the specificity minus one. But the curve plot, the plot it looks like this. Uh, that that has a clear maximum. Uh, and at this maximum, basically the yeah, the, the both the sense both the sensitivity and specificity are are obvious. So this is Conventionally regarded as the optimal value for the cutoff. So I'll, I'll calculate this. Uh, I'll, I'll find the cutoff value where this uh, J is just a uh, In this case, that is uh, shown here by the star in the graphs. This would be my this would be cutoff value that I would report. What's the optimal cutoff value based? Like, does it uh, simply have a sensitivity? No, so you just have it. Uh, so, 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 so both, uh, uh, yeah. It tries to get the highest. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's where, where the sun is highest. So it's, there's no way to do it. It's just uh, so, so you, you could alternatively, if you, if you, if you would go forward and say, I, I, I find it. I would rather have that my measurement is more sensitive and I don't care as much about the specificity. Uh, then, of course, what you would do is you would give the sensitivity more weight in this. That is different. It, it, it takes that into account. But that is not how it is used. Uh, it, would, it would take a lot of sense to do that if you know uh, what, 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 what the test is for. Um, uh, so again, so this divine wrong here that, that would be the 50% chance. So uh, if I would if I if I do if we do a set of measurements and I would find a uh, an LC curve that uh, is close to this line, then it would then my test would be just as almost just as good or as bad as possible. And then the last metric that you can uh, get from this uh, curve is uh, just calculate the area under that curve. Similar. So, uh, um, oh. okay. um, that basically what the area of the curve is, is it's the probability that I uh, get at my test. Uh, can distinguish between two uh, two randomly chosen healthy and deceased samples. The forget that that is the argument. Let's see. So now this is for the for the for the, so this what allows to simulate the data, which is pretty neat. Uh, this is uh, for, um, for for the data from the field test. So. Looks on that so these are the histograms of the actual data points. And then you can look at so they are not not only just to do the cash flow. But then again, this is what you have to look at. So here too, uh, you can you can go through the same procedure for every cut off value, so calculate what the sensitivity and specificity is, and plot that in this in this kind of C graph. You can calculate what the maximum uh, well, this index is going to be, and then you can find the cutoff value that corresponds to that. Uh, and if you do that, it will then end up at uh, this, uh, this value 3.5 per milliliter. So that's a good one. That's a good one. At, at that cutoff value, uh, the sensitivity and specificity is 86%. 80%? 86%. 80 not, uh, not that good. Uh, what is a good idea? Was realistically good? Uh, well, realistically good is in the minus. So it's, it's, it's so maybe sensitively from the matter. Yeah. It's still so, no. It could be worse, but it could also be better. Like this, you know, it's good. Um, the idea you, you see some uncertainties uh, in the graphs here. Um, 
these are uh, these, these are determined by a uh, method called bootstrapping. It's a, it's a statistical uh, method of cheating. So, so if you lose, you, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so that, this is the data that we have. This is all the data that we have. And what we do with bootstrapping is uh, here I'm just going uh, to have this pool of, uh, so it also has uh, measurements of coordinates. So, uh, we're going to uh, make a new pool of coordinate measurements by randomly selecting points from my original pool. Uh, and they can, these can be uh, they can be blurs in there. I don't care. I just pick 200. Uh, so I don't take them out. I just pick one and copy it into a new data. So I can have a new data set and I do my statistics on it. And I'll do that again. I'll just take 200 measurements co copied from the original set. So they will be a different uh, set of given values and do statistics on that. So, so I yeah, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, so I'm not actually taking them out. I'm just copying them. Uh, so technically, you have 200 of the same measurement. That is, uh, yeah, yeah there is a very low probability, but yeah, could be. Uh, uh, so you mean you will get the extreme? No, no, you don't like it. But, but anything can happen. I just have to, I, I, have, uh, okay. I have 200 measurements, and I'm going to, to construct a new set of 200 measurements by just taking, copying. <laughs> Randomly 200 uh, from the original set. So if you can make two more sets into the two and more sets into the two, it's great. Right. Uh, but, you can <laughs> <laughs> but you can also have a lower number. Now, so, so the, the, the underlying idea is that uh, that you have this huge population of true values that are really big and that you don't have access to. But you did a measurement uh, from 200 samples, which you think is representative of the whole population. Uh, but, but you're not so, not so satisfied with what the numbers. So what you're going to do is construct uh, a new data set and you're going to pretend that it's also representative of all the <laughs> and, that, and then by that, by that, by that argument, you can calculate, uh, uh, <laughs> you can calculate, and uh, you can calculate these uncertainties on there. Uh, so one, one thing that you, that you will see is that if you would have a data set where, where, where there's a lot of extremes, uh, then by doing this procedure, there, there is a probability that at some point you will get a data set that consists yes. only of extremes. And these will all add up. And these, yeah. uh, these will mess up, will mess up your, your nice, uh, your nice, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it frowned upon? Uh, yeah, there's this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. So, <laughs> Uh, uh, there is a bit of a so, uh, this is this is a study where there is only 40 patients in the data text takes quite a long time. Uh, if you if you would if you would use properly because you would but that's simply not always possible. And, uh, and so you, and you, have, you have to find a value which, which, which you work with the uh, And this is, uh, this is this is one way you can do those sort of secrets. It's one way to get a little bit of feeling about the uncertainty. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to argue that the uncertainties are set in gold. End up with a proper value of 3.5. Um, if, if I did not know whether uh, whether my uh, my uncertainty in that was uh, out of the three, so it's so so important to buy 3.5. Let's say it was one, and then it had to be four here. So the accuracy that you the accuracy that you report here depends on the uh, uh, on the variation of the measurement. You see that one? So if, 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 if I if I did the calculation I had with the three point five and then uh, from this statistical analysis it certainly turns out to be three as well. Then I might as well stop because then the uh, variations. So it is it is a little bit of a trick to uh, to get some some feeling for the uh, for how how good is my uh, my assessment. Um, for this, for this uh, uh, particular, one thing that you have to take into account, 
then in some situations you want to be you want to be very sensitive, you want to, you want to find the disease. Uh, and in some situations, like this one, there's also a big incentive to, uh, to, to not uh, to not misdiagnose too many health yeah, that is, that's, that's hard to say. It's because it's it, it's a devilish trade off because we really, if you set it, if you set it to low, you would spare more tissue, but there would be, there, there, would, there is a chance of some things of slipping through. Uh, so it also depends on. Um, is there, is there a regular follow up for this patient? If this patient comes to the doctor, uh, let's say, two and a half years anyway, uh, then, then, may, then maybe it is uh, justified to say, okay, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it and we'll see it again. So, so it really depends on the, it depends on the, on the context and how it's used. Um, so, so yeah, so some of the questions that, that, that can arise from this is uh, okay, not, not, so let's suppose I did this, we did this study, and we published it uh, uh, according to how 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 the, how the journal would like it to have. So this is this is what the, this is what they got at this lab, and uh, they got uh, this lab, uh, and, and the cutoff that was supported even without the doctor's uncertainty was three point five. So now let's 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 assume that somehow uh, this gets it to. Uh, to, to because the cutoff would, yeah, cutoff protocol would blindly follow the rules that would dictate that the classifier was measuring that disease. But knowing what we know is that it's, it's, it's eerily close to the to, 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 to that cutoff point in the first place. Uh, and, that, and that was uh, it was not completely arbitrary, but still, it was also uh, not too And this cutoff value of specificity is 80%, and it's relatively correct diagnosis is healthy when healthy. And that means that one minus one and for 20 is my probability of incorrect diagnosis. So the, the diagnosis of this disease when it is healthy. Uh, and then the question is do I find that number? Is that uh, if I want to reduce the numbers? Uh, if I want to reduce the number of interventions, this, this basically tells me there is a 20% chance that, uh, that, that I, will, I will classify a healthy tissue as disease. Uh, and, and so, so the thing that helps is that it's acceptable. Um, and it's acceptable that when I lower the threshold, uh, it results in more, uh, in, in missing more minute inclusions. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking these questions not as a doctor because I'm not a doctor, but I do have the task because I'm, I do this work and I, I publish this and I follow the rules for publications. So I get this the data out there, but I think that I think they're not really, uh, really careful in using the data. So do I feel comfortable in my measurement? And I've got a good overlap within, within their confidence in this process. Uh, so there's also really, but one question that, that I can answer is uh, so how does how does the position of my my measurements increase these positions? Uh, because I measure here with my with three point seven five plus and minus point five. Uh, with the three point seven five plus and minus one that I that I have to report this work plus minus one. Okay. okay, but now now I know okay the equation is about about in the second decimal. So it's not too bad. That's good. Um, that, that, that also uh, factors into that, but that is something that uh, at least, because it's not my thing, but something that we can. Uh, yeah, so I, I, call, <laughs> I call this a uh, little bit of the curse of uh, dichotomy, dichotomy is that you try to classify it some, uh, something in two groups, as I have to one uh, Whereas, whereas obviously it's, it's, it's not uh, obviously it's not a comfortable thought that you're going to based on some sort of the concept. It's just something like that. So you would rather have something more uh, uh, more fluid, more uh, uh, question like well, what is the probability that uh, what is the probability that the patient with a positive test has the disease? Uh, the answer is not uh, sensitive because that was that was a good probability of a correct diagnosis when the patient has the disease. Uh, 
and we don't know the history. So that, that's what says they could not be asked. Uh, now, uh, just to go to a little bit complicated set of problems, I've already shown uh, flashing through uh, this notes a little bit. But if this is the question, then it's an, that's a question of conditional probability. So the probability of disease given that, that's the score. Uh, and and that's, uh, that kind of question is, uh, is, is, the, is the field of Bayesian statistics, of conditional, uh, conditional statistics. Uh, and what you can do, what you can use, uh, what you must use uh, is uh, is Bayes theorem. Uh, did you have a part of this one? Uh, so the probability of, uh, of A given B can be expressed as the uh, probability of B given A. The probability of having A in the first place and probability. Write this, uh, write this in terms of uh, 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 if you look at uh, uh, translate at uh, the first case and convert the disease and give a positive test and be expressed as the probability of positive test uh, with disease. Uh, here is also the probability of disease in the first place. The probability of getting a positive test. Um, probability of uh, having a positive test is, uh, is the sum of the probability of having a positive test in the FMCs and the other FMCs. And if you want to replace it, it's uh, with me, so I, I, I cannot introduce it for you here right now. But if you do, uh, you can buy all these probabilities. Uh, in this form, simplify it a little bit further in the next slide. Uh, just, just one remark uh, Bayesian, Bayesian statistics has a little bit of a bad name in, in medicine. I think partly due to the, to the terminology that the Bayesian, uh, Bayesian statisticians use, uh, they, they, call this, they call this um, your A prior. But this is so what you're putting. And so, what, what essentially what this says is that the probability of some, uh, let's say, disease uh, given with the positive test depends, so, so the density of the probability depends on the probability of having the disease in the first place. That is not something that, that is a subjective, uh, subjective measure because. Could do, for example, is uh, if, you have, if you have a large screening, uh, so let's say a uh, uh, mammography screening, uh, with a lot, uh, with a, with a, with a lot of data, so there's a million people coming in, and uh, you know, 100,000 uh, people uh, actually have, uh, have some, uh, some, some reason that, yeah, that, that the statistician would say, okay, that the probability of having disease is, uh, is 10%. And then if that is 10%, then, then, then this probability can also be lower. So, so that, that, that can falsely lead to the idea that, that, that the probabilities of disease are really low. Uh, but of course, in, in our situation, uh, where we have one patient, uh, this is a number that relates to a patient. So there can be a very high suspicion of patients that relates to disease. And the doctor has to quantify that some way. So, okay, okay. So, so it could still be subjective, but it could also be the outcome of a test that you did before. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bad thing, but I think that's not uh, that's not really uh, that's not a, it's, uh, so, so belief is not necessarily uh, something that you that you make up, but that's really um, this is a uh, this is a cleaned up version of the. Uh, so uh, the probability of disease given a positive test divided by one minus that probability is called the uh, odds in this case. We have a bit of tipping odds. So this is the, the odds after the test uh, are proportional course, the odds before the test. And they are multiplied and reduced by this factor. This factor that is the ratio of the probability of 
and the cost of tax on the vaccines and the problem of the cost of the vaccine. Okay. Uh, the positive likelihood ratio, which is the ratio of the true positives, probability of the positive test on the vaccines divided by the false positives, so it's the number of positives and the number of positives. You can calculate that from the numbers that we already have. You can calculate that from the same thing, which is the same thing. You can do the same thing. So negative likelihood ratio, which is the ratio of false negatives on true negatives, and that's also the same thing. Sensitive means positivity. Yeah, so. This is uh, again, again in terms of disease. Um, so also, this is after that, based on the likelihood that it's compliant with tests. Uh, and if you want to calculate that, you know, for the health disease, for health disease, that could be in three cases, could be in the other two You have, you have, you know, there is a reason from which you have, from which you could have health. Maybe use the test as well to see to either reinforce or re, uh, reinforce that the assessment or not. Uh, negative numbers. Uh, and again, probabilities are also just related. This slide, but uh, now let's apply that to the, uh, to the simulations first. So here again is the uh, still overlapping uh, overlapping simulations with the means of eight plus minus two, ten plus minus two, cut off value to D nine. The ROC curve so sensitivity. And sensitivity of the specificity themselves. So the cross, so the red cross on every graph shows this one. This From the sensitivity and specificity, I could also calculate this positive likelihood ratio. It goes to the negative likelihood ratio. So you can increase the graphs. And here is when you get again the Fermi's value back. Uh, and here is the value for the for the likelihood test. Um, I can I can use these to make graphs of uh, uh, prior probability of disease and then post probability of disease based on that prior probability. So the likelihood ratio is one. Uh, that means that my post uh, odds are the same as, as my prior odds. My post probability is the same as my so, so I like to raise your one foot, we just use this graph and the uh, green one. Um, if I would, uh, if I pick, uh, let's say, the uh, uh, one that I suggested, so nine, uh, then my positive likelihood ratio is uh, log scale, so that's uh, so two, I think, two, three. Um, again, my is better. So it means that if I have a prior probability of disease of uh, let's say 40 percent and after the positive test that is increased increased to 60 percent so we can say if I have a prior probability of 80 percent and after the test I have again so the result is enforced but not as uh, not, not as big as it is if I take a higher cut of value Corresponds to a higher positive likelihood ratio here. It's even more close to the frequency, the frequency is more steep. So the amount of the support is under the prior belief that we're not using the belief for some time. So this would be the post test probability of disease versus the pre test probability uh, depending on the, on the likelihood ratio. Uh, same thing. Healthy, uh, healthy tests, so 
So what, basically what you would do in this case, for the diagnostic in this case, you do a measurement, you don't compare it with anything. What you just do is you, uh, you, look, you look for your measurements and uh, translate that into a likelihood ratio. For that likelihood ratio, you construct uh, one of these curves. Uh, and then you use this curve uh, as, as, uh, uh, as the decision making tool. So from, by some other means, you have a prior probability of uh, the suit. So Subjective uh, in the doctor in the sense that it looks at the tissue and thinks, okay, this is uh, this is probably uh, benign or probably malignant. So, so that would that would give you the points on the, on this axis somewhere. Uh, then with measurements, you can translate it into the post uh, post -treatment. So obviously, the, the better uh, the test is, uh, the, the more that curve would would uh, would uh, burn this problem. Really be in for uh, really be uh, adding evidence for the for the six. Uh, yeah, that can be if uh, if I would pick uh, if I would pick. Uh, this in this case no, in this case no, because uh, the the likelihood is uh, is not not really so the minimum uh, the minimum result here is uh, is the green line. But if, if, if we drop below one, then the curve is uh, going here. Uh, and then we have some actually negative, uh, negative. So can I, can I do this? Okay, so this is again for simulated data that can be clean. Also try it for the, for the, for the clinical data. Uh, so again, here this, this is. This is true data, and this is the sense the RC curve corresponds to that with the maximum noted index that was going to be 3.5 as a curve value, so 3.5 is when you star in the least figures, that corresponds to the left curve. There's a couple of things, of course, that you notice. So, first of all, it's, 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 it gets really messy because the data is messy, so it also gets messy. So, the question is, uh, as I think we should remove this part. Let's, let's say that uh, this part is more or less better. Uh, then, uh, taking 3.5, uh, uh, taking 3.5, so let's say I measure 3.5, that would be the likelihood ratio about 4. And if I could construct the graph, and I could do that, so it would be, let's say, 40%. Prior probability that you can translate in this case into uh, second uh, The funny, uh, funny thing that you see is that if, uh, if I would take a uh, triple of uh, five, uh, then I, I actually don't get that much more information. Uh, so it's not, not, uh, not that sensitive to uh, So actually, my guess is not so sensitive. Um, the other hand, if, uh, if I would focus on uh, healthy tissue, the curve of value of uh, 3.5 is different from this curve. So if I have probably 50% of tissue that is actually healthy, then after the test, uh, after the negative test, I would, uh, I would increase that value to 85%. If I set the threshold uh, lower, so this this is a way of uh, of trying to uh, of going around this uh, this uh, this pure classification. I'm presenting it with with, uh, with a lot of mix and matter because it is it is still not straightforward how we should look at what it really depends I think on the uh, 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 on the situation, but why I think about it is because I, don't, I really don't feel comfortable in, uh, in embedding this technique and arguing that we should use it in the clinic. And then uh, my, my only message to the clinicians is going to be that I can use 3.5. Uh, 
So that, so that is one uh, that that is one part of my uh, of my doubts. The other one is, uh, and that is, that is also a uh, question I would get a little bit more back to the last is the how do you find how do you measure the uh, Because if that is if that is imprecise, then uh, that is the first of my point of the first is that uh, it's read. So reading back to how how this uh, how the vision of loop how the vision of uh, about so this is uh, so this is a raw measurement of a mirror in a OCT system uh, and this is what we get from the from the spectrometer so uh, the back spectrum is the wave number here so you see this nice field spectrum that corresponds to a uh, full reflection so if I calculate the Fourier transform uh, then I get uh, real signals and if I take the transform of the complex signal the real part of that complex signal is the distribution of red here the necessary part is the same oscillation from shift to phase limited. And if I calculate the angle, I get to the factor system. And I get the black line, or the blue, uh, the blue line. The blue line is also the converted to the the grayscale value, and that is what ends up to be. Yeah, that's good. So, that would be one mirror. So if I have a sample which has uh, multiple reflectors and so multiple uh, imperfect mirrors, so let's say only a few, then the, here the black is the, would, be the, would be the reflectivity as a function of that. So, so the mirrors are in place. And for each of these mirrors, I would get a, sig uh, a, a copy of this, uh, this uh, interference pattern signal. Uh, so it's a copy of the, of the angular. And if I have a lot of these reflectors, so many that I don't even draw them anymore. And all these interference patterns start to overlap, uh, so you can't distinguish the individual reflectors anymore. Um, it's basically just that is all interference. And you can calculate, there's also an envelope for that, blue, and that would then be your OCD simulation for the gray scale. These multiple mirrors, so that's Every single one of those scattered black lines with its own amplitude and its own phase. Uh, that, is, uh, that, that is called formation spectrum. C is another important kind of statistics of the spectrum. So, statistics of X, so you have the first distribution base, you have the first distribution base, and then you have the first distribution base, different reflections. And this was the, the badass formula that, uh, that described all that. So you have uh, the, the gas signal is a fluctuating the quantity. You can calculate the variance of that. Uh, given by this, uh, this uh, interval, the interval of the detection system of the system. It's a scattering cross section, a scattering scattering cross section. There are different particles. Uh, and here is this, is this term that, that serves all these phase differences, and that is the thickest speckle term. It's a speckle that just serves random phases. Of course, if you would average all these random phase differences, then you would average, and you would average this phase term, then you have a structure spectrum. Can combine it with the property here, which is called the tax scattering coefficient within the numerical matrix of the species. So we can detection of the species. Uh, point being, this, this is not the property that we want to try to measure, but in there uh, is this speckle. Set. So speckle is, is what determines my possible. Yeah. So this is that's how so how we start to look at it. So we take an OCT image that uh, large scale loop looks just like the activity. activity. If I zoom in, I see this uh, see these fluctuations there, and this these fluctuations in intensity that get against the step of that. Uh, 
what we did last time is we uh, more or less derived that uh, with respect to follows of linear distributions. What we can do is uh, take uh, some take the average of the P signal uh, in depth here uh, at certain uh, at key points, and you can see in depth calculate what the distribution of the amplitude value system is. So we know that the uh, now an increased uh, increase in the number of uh, reflectors, and uh, when you come to the black, it has uh, some of delta and delta with the peaks and more it becomes continuous, uh, continuous distribution of activity uh, per unit. We calculate reflection uh, from a very small volume that would be uh, mu times, times dz, the parts of which the parts would you know, pick up from that if there are species. This is what this is scattered reflections and the uh, pick up the parts. That means that transmission through such a small volume is one minus uh, minus dz. One minus mu s z, and assume that there's no absorption, so this is the part that is lost, so this is the part that survives. So we take the next volume, and last that, and the next volume, so transmission through any of these volumes would be one minus mu z to the power of n. That's this explanation. And so here we take that again, and then we have three days later. So that means that, uh, that I can expect that my ICP signal with respect to PK is exponentially with my Yes, this is uh, true. It's found by experiment as well. So, uh, simple, uh, a simple model for the ICP signal versus that is near two thirds of that is the generation code. And there is uh, an instrument of that that does that machine. It just tells you that if you lens with very sharp focus and your signal in the focus would be higher. So very simple now, very simple. Um, what we uh, what we did recently is uh, is try to find uh, the precision. Of the attenuation transmission of those meshes. So, the normal way or the conventional way of determining that is, uh, is by taking this as a and then with the model from the previous slide, I just fit that model to the data, and I get, uh, I get a value for mu. The question is, can I get this model? Mu that was understood, and the question is, how accurate, how accurate is that? Uh, is that um, well, it turns out that you can uh, that you can actually predict how accurate the generation is, and that, uh, that prediction is given here in this problem. So this is the precision of the attenuation coefficient that I can achieve, uh, and it is related to uh, the length. And it scales with a square root of uh, the number of data points that are in this uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, region, and with the number of averages, which show you the number of averages that are in the max. It's quite, quite simple, uh, quite a simple result. Uh, there is a, a three in there, of course, from the station. There are some equations involved in this. Uh, this is a constant that is related to the values. Uh, and if, uh, if, you sim if you simulate that, then, uh, that the precision as a function of n, then you see the simulation uh, and prediction uh, are pretty close. Are pretty close to that. There's always a little bit of difference between the simulation and the theory because you only use a finite number of points. But this was, this was actually uh, quite. Quite a nice result because now I can 
the emissions that you have to predict beforehand of the ecosystem emissions. So I think that is too low. Uh, then you can, uh, for example, adjust uh, uh, the region. That's not always possible because sometimes I'm able to adjust a small layer. But I can adjust that a little bit by, by using uh, uh, averaging more, uh, taking more data as an position. But there is a second approach, so this was with perfect. There's a second approach uh, that is called um, uh, death result method, that is uh, published a couple of years ago by uh, Lucas Jones. Uh, and there you calculate the attenuation coefficient uh, from, uh, from, from the data from the entity data set. So I use the deficit. Each pixel is divided by uh, sum of uh, the entity values from that point on. If this, if this is your uh, if this is your signal, then the generation coefficient at this point uh, is uh, is this intensity uh, divided by the sum of all the rest of the intensities. You can you can read the derivation in this paper. It's really straightforward. It's really, it's no problem. No problem. Problem. Right. 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 So what I uh, so what's uh, so what's uh, that is uh, take an uh, take a real x cat so this is more normal so we have the uh, of the x and it's focus in those so you see this high here the focus of that side and you can simulate that same signal uh, with speckle moments and now it's uh, truly pixelated and you can use this uh, uh this formula here uh, to calculate uh, uh, to calculate the attenuation There was a fixed attenuation of half uh, a millimeter going in. Uh, so you can see that for the most part, uh, it, is, it is recovered quite nicely here. Uh, at the end of the range, it goes wrong because uh, this uh, sum is not that well free. That kind of noise. You can read about that in the paper as well because it was discussed there. Um, so basically, what the goal of the type of doing the assignment is, is, that is, is, that is, is to study how accurate the uh, SP race coefficient can be determined by using that, that second. So, there's a couple of steps that I want to take. Um, first, we can simulate um, XP scans uh, with speckling there. Uh, we can average those by the by the, uh, the death result method of retrieving the generation coefficient. Uh, and then repeat that, just get that in the model of uh, generation values, and then see uh, what, what the precision, uh, what is the precision of this retrieved generation coefficient is compared to what we have before. Sometimes you look here, but I have, uh, I have uh, I'll, share, I'll share that. So I have a document that, uh, that describes that step by step, so I don't think it's it looks a little bit more complicated here than it is in the Uh, yeah, so, so what we'll do is we'll simulate, we'll simulate first an uh, average phase scan according to this, uh, to, the, to this formula. So you have uh, the, the instructions here. So the, the error is to create a little bit of simulated scan so that we give you a graph, a graph like this. And then the second thing, uh, the second step is to add speckle to that. Essentially, is a method that, that is the same as, the, as what we made prior our simulations a few years earlier. We know that uh, the speckle tool is a radio distribution, so we can sample random radio values. 
project in Serbia will take us ready for the grid density function and calculate the field of distribution function and invert that. The equator will then remember that invert that in the picture sampling equation that's given on here. And so from the from the clean blue average A scale, we can get a random uh, A scale by, by following this uh, following this formula. Function in there, okay. It should be possible. Then the second uh, step is to apply this, uh, apply the depth resolved uh, uh, formula. If you do that on the graph above, you will get something that uh, is noisy, noisy like this because of the speckle. So we see the retrieved configuration for the coefficient is also going to be uh, also going to be noisy. So if you would expect uh, as an input is this blue line here. What you, will, what you will get out is, is noisy like this. The trick of overcoming, uh, of overcoming that is to do averaging. So if you retrieve this, let's say 100 times, 100 times, 100 base cats, and then uh, apply the algorithm, then you'll get something like this. So a lot less transformation. But you can still see uh, that it is not uh, what you would expect. Uh, it's okay. That's partly this due because uh, that focus that is still in there. So it has to be corrected first. The second part is that uh, it's not reliable in the end of the scale because, uh, because of this denominator, it's smaller and smaller. And so the last part we're not going to solve. There is uh, it's like a kind of literature that, that tries to do that. Uh, points with function can be solved, but it has to be divided out again. And then you can see that you at least for the, for the beginning of the scan, you get results that are. That were pretty close to uh, to uh, to what is expected. So it's what you do, what you do then is then, uh, is then only use these values, these estimated values uh, going uh, going on. And then the final step is uh, uh, basically repeating the procedure for uh, uh, as a function of the mu that you put in. So put put the put the mu in and see how accurate the result is that you get out. It's, uh, Vary the number of averages a little bit uh, see how it happens. See, it seems like a lot now. Uh, just read it through. If, uh, if at any point in any step there was a problem, <laughs> let me know and I'll we'll go through it. So, again, the goal is to, uh, to just have you working with it and then see what, uh, what uh, the difficulties are and where the problems are. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> bootstrap, bootstrap, all things. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how many people have been solving this? Been so for a while, for like ten years, the most successful. The one group is a little bit uh, spooky because then you won't get the same grade. But <laughs> yeah. you can do it in your own time. And you'll let me know if you're in the text. I wrote, I wrote this out for, uh, for the workshop. So if people have tested, uh, so I think it should be uh, possible, but uh, it's slightly a bit problem to it. And so just let me know if something is not clear and uh, it's not problem. Okay. Off you go then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank <laughs> you.